Today we're going to be making a little shark puppet. You can follow along and download the pattern from this link. Let's get started. Baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 baby shark. Step one is to print out your pattern. You can download it for free from my website from the link down below. You could cut the pieces out and tape them together, but I like to glue it to a piece of brown paper to make it a little bit thicker and stronger. It makes the pattern last longer if you want to reuse it. You could use a glue stick, but I like to use spray adhesive. And once it's all glued down, we can cut it out. If you want your fish to be like a stuffed animal or a prop, you can leave the pattern like this. But if you want it to be a puppet, you do need an entrance hole in the bottom. And that is what these lines right here represent. So you're gonna cut on this line and cut on that line so that that way you have a hole to put your hand for the puppet. So let's cut that out. So first we have to cut our puppet out of foam. This type of foam works great. You can get this at Joann or pretty much any other craft stores. I recommend a half inch thickness for this pattern. But my favorite type of foam is the reticulated foam. I have a link to both of these foams down in the description. First thing we're gonna do is separate our patterns. We have our fabric patterns and our foam patterns. So let's make sure we don't get them mixed up. So this is, and they're clearly labeled here. This says foam, that says fabric. So we're gonna put our fabric patterns aside the fins are also labeled. These two are fabric, and these two are foam. We're also gonna put our mouth plate patterns aside too. Now I'm gonna trace two of these and flip it over after each trace. You'll notice there are notches around the pattern. Be sure to make little dots or lines where each of those placements are. Next, we're gonna cut out these foam pieces. A lot of puppeteers like to use a razor blade to do that, but if you're using half inch foam, that's thin enough for you to use scissors. And that's what I'm gonna to use today. Just make sure you don't accidentally angle the scissors when cutting. You don't want the edges to be beveled. Make sure you hold on to these scraps. You should be able to use some of them to make the other fins. Next, we have to glue these foam pieces together. Now there's a couple different choices to do that. A lot of people like to use hot glue and that's a perfectly fine option to use. My preference though is contact cement. A lot of puppeteers use a brand called Barge. Masters is something I can get locally though. There's a link to both down in the description. But I know hot glue is more readily available for most people. Today I'm gonna use the contact cement. If you decide to use contact cement too, make sure you are in a very well ventilated area or outside. All right, these pieces are all glued and I let them sit for about seven minutes till it gets tacky. Now let's start sticking it together. Make sure to line up these notches. That'll make sure this goes together evenly. All right, now we have the foam part of our fish complete. At this point, you can put your hand in the entrance hole to make sure it's the right size. If it's a little bit snug, that's okay, because when we go to glue the fabric in, it does take it in a tiny bit. But if you need to cut that hole a little bit larger, now is the time to do that. Next, we're gonna need our mouth plate patterns. Now there's all types of materials that you could use to make your mouth plate. Some people use thin plywood or balsa wood. Some people even use cardboard, though I wouldn't recommend that, because if your hands get sweaty, the cardboard can break down. But one of my favorite things to use is actually plastic from a storage bin. You can get those tiny shoe bins from anywhere from 99 cents to $2, and you'll be able to cut a few mouth plates out of it. And even the bigger bins are only like $5, and you could cut tons of mouth plates out of those. That's what I'm gonna be using today. This is just the lid, but you could actually use the sides and bottom of the bin as well. Now let's trace them out. Make sure to mark your notches again, and also label them top and bottom. Now the tool to cut these out will depend a little bit on the thickness of the plastic. For most of these bins, regular scissors will work fine. But if you find it's a little thick and a little tough, then you can use tin snips. Today I'm gonna use the tin snips to get through the edges and then the scissors to do the fine cutting. I also like to give a light sand to the edges and the top and bottom. It'll help make a slightly stronger connection when gluing it to the foam. 
Another thing that's nice to do is to get a little bump here so that you have something for your hand to hold on to when you're operating the puppet inside. Now there's many ways to do this, but here's a simple one. I'm just gonna stack a few thin layers of this craft foam to give it a little bit of a speed bump. And now I'll glue it down. Okay, then I'll stick them together. And then I'll glue this whole piece down right about there. Once that's tacky, you can stick it on. You wanna leave some room away from the edges, that way it won't interfere with gluing this into the mouth. You could just leave it like this, but you don't want this foam to break down. So you could uh, glue some fabric onto it with spray adhesive. But another quick way to do it is just to use a little bit of gaff tape. You could use duct tape, but you may have noticed that sometimes duct tape can get kind of crackly and break down when it dries out. But what's nice about gaffer's tape is it's made out of fabric and it will last a very long time. It won't break down the way duct tape does. It's easiest to trim the tape from the back. Now there's the speed bump for the mouth. Now this whole step is optional. It's just your personal preference, but you might find it to be pretty handy. Now we're gonna be gluing these mouth plates into the foam fish. Again, you could use hot glue for this, but I'm sticking with the contact cement. You put a little glue around the rim and outside edges of the mouth plates, and then around the lips and the inside of the fish mouth. After a few minutes and it's tacky, you can start to stick it in. Make sure you put the bottom mouth plate on the bottom. And also make sure the speed bump is on the inside of the puppet. And be sure to line up those center notches too. And just like that, it's really starting to look like a puppet now. I love the way that that fishtail wags and it's gonna look great. We're done with the foam work for now. Now we're gonna move on to the fabric part of the puppet. Now when picking a fabric to cover your puppet, you're pretty much limitless in what you can use. Though I do have some recommendations. Fleece is a great option because it's really strong and it also has a lot of stretch, which is really handy in puppet making. Now you could use the fleece that you get from a craft store, but one of the best fleeces you can get for puppet making is called nylon fleece. Some some people call it Antron fleece as well. It's the kind of fleece that they use to make all kind of television style puppets. We use it a lot on this channel. For this little shark, I'm gonna use a light blue for the top and a white for the belly. But you could use whatever you want. You could even use fur, though that would look kind of strange. So next we have to get out our fabric pattern. Now if you're only gonna use one color for your shark, you can just leave the pattern as is. Just trace this out of the fabric and then you'll be done. But if you want the top and the belly to be a different color, you're gonna have to make one more cut on this pattern. That will be across the this line right here. I'll do that now. Make sure to transfer the notches to the other side of the pattern as well. So I'm gonna do this part with the blue and this belly with the white. Make sure you lay the fabric with the back facing up. You'll notice the fabric will stretch a lot one way and just a little bit in the other direction. That'll be for just about any type of fleece that you use. For this pattern, you want the stretch to be going this way and you just trace it. Be sure to mark your notches too. Make sure to notch where the fin placement is as well. Now I'll trace out the belly. Again, make sure your stretch is going this way. Now on light fabrics like this, a Sharpie is kind of an intense marker to use on it. I'm mostly just using this so that you guys can see in the camera. But another nice little tip is to actually use a highlighter. It's a little bit more forgiving, and even if a tiny bit shows, it won't stick out as near as much as the black Sharpie will. I'll show you what that looks like too. Now we're gonna cut all these fabric pieces out. If you're gonna be sewing with a sewing machine, make sure to add at least a half inch of seam allowance. If you're sewing by hand, you can cut right in the line. Today, I'm gonna to be using a sewing machine.
Before you start stitching this together, make sure you pin them. Pinning is so important, and it's the reason why we have all these registration marks, so that you can pin them in the exact right spot. All right, now those bellies are pinned on, I'm gonna go stitch them up. Okay, now those bellies are sewn on. Now we have to sew the whole thing together just like that. So now we're gonna stitch along the edges of this. We're gonna stitch along this entire top edge, hook around the tail, down to the entrance hole, then stop there. And then continue sewing here. Do not sew the mouth shut or the entrance hole shut. You wanna leave those open. All right, that is all stitched up. Next, we have to do our fabric mouth plate. Now, there's a couple different options for this as well. Uh, a lot of people like to use felt, which is a great option, but something that I really like to use is a nice velvet. This is a more maroon velvet. Good mouth plate colors are some shade of red or black. But again, you can kind of use whatever you want. Today, I'm gonna use the velvet. Flip it over to the back and then trace it. Be sure to mark the notches and the side seams as well as marking the top and bottom. Again, when cutting this out, if you're gonna be using a sewing machine, add a half inch of seam allowance. If you're sewing it directly, you don't need any seam allowance. I will be machine sewing it. Make sure you have the velvet side facing in. If you're using felt, it won't really make a difference. And also be sure to line up the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. It's easy to accidentally make a mistake at this point because they look so similar. And be sure to pin it in. Lining up those center seams. All right, let's go back to the machine. All right, now we have our fabric mouth plate in this fabric shark. Now we have to put the foam and fabric together. I like to use contact cement, but again, you can use hot glue. A lot of people like to cake the whole thing with glue and then stick it in, but I actually like to just go along the edges. You can get a more snug fit, and it prevents from trapping wrinkles in there as well. Also, then the mouth won't be as tight to perform. All right, it's tacky, so now let's stick it together. Make sure you line up the top with the top. It's an easy thing to accidentally forget, and you do not want that to happen. So I line up that top notch first, and then I line up that bottom notch, and then it all starts to kind of fall into place. Line it up on your line. All right, I'll press it down. So now we have this. Now the goal is to turn it inside out. Now what I found with this pattern is you can actually turn it through the hole here, okay? So if you didn't have an entrance hole, you would have to leave a small part of it unstitched so that you could turn it inside out. So here's what I do. I put my hand in like I'm performing this puppet and I slowly start working the fabric around the fish, just like this. I put the head through that entrance hole, 
and it starts turning inside out into the fish. Now, I will say the rest of this part is, is kind of difficult because we have to slide this foam tail into this fabric tail and turn this inside out. And there's just a lot of friction with this texture of foam and with this fabric. So it does take some wrestling, but it will go in as long as you uh, keep working it in slowly. So I turn the rest of the tail inside out like this first. Now to get the points out, I like to just take a marker and push it out like this. There you go. So that's all turned out. Now we have to try to slide this in just like so. Even once you think it's on, still kind of massage it a little bit just to make sure there's no wrinkles or little traps of foam inside there. But other than that, it should all line up just perfectly all the way around just like that. So now it's really starting to look like a puppet. Now we're gonna focus on the fins. We have our fabric patterns and our foam patterns. Let's cut out the foam first. So we have our side one, and we're gonna want two of these ones. So let's trace this out on the scrap piece of foam. I like to label the top part of the foam too. Now cut them out. Just so you don't get confused from which side's down, I like to put a little notch at the bottom of each one too. That way you don't accidentally put it on like this. Though it probably wouldn't be a big deal. We'll put these aside quick. Now let's do our fabric side fins. For the side fins, I like to do white on the bottom and blue on the top. So here's a fun way to do it. Just take these two fabrics and put them face to face like this, okay? And then we take our side fin and then we're gonna trace it out twice. Now we're gonna stitch along the edge right there and there. Make sure you leave this bottom portion open so that you can still put the foam inside. All right, we stitch through both pieces all the way around just this edge right here, okay? So I'm gonna carefully cut it out. Make sure you don't cut too close to the stitch line or else you could cut the thread. Turn them inside out. Then we'll put these in. Now the stitch of this clothes doesn't have to be a fancy stitch because this end is gonna be butted up against the side of the shark anyway. So I recommend just a simple whip stitch. And if you wanna learn how to do a whip stitch, I made a whole video on how to do special stitches just for puppets that you can see right here. All right, now we're gonna stitch these fins onto the side. Now you can kind of place them wherever you want, but you can, if you want, also follow along with this guide. You can just kind of line up where this was on the puppet, just like that. And then I like to put a little pin at the front and back. So that way I can make sure that I put it in the same spot on both sides. All right, now we have our little side fins on. Now let's do that top dorsal fin. I want the whole dorsal fin to be blue, so I'm gonna take two of the blue pieces and put them face to face.
All right, now we're gonna stitch it on top. If you want, you can use the pattern for placement again. And just like that, we have our dorsal fit on. Before we put on some features like the eyes and teeth, I like to put some glue around the entrance ring. It helps if you're entering the puppet quickly. That way you don't accidentally go between the fabric and the foam. For the entrance ring, I like to use Fabri-Tac, though you could use hot glue. I put the glue directly on the foam, on the inner foam edge, and then just roll the fabric in. Now let's talk about a few options for eyes. There's a ton of different choices for eyes you can do that aren't even limited to this. I even have two other videos on my channel that show different techniques for making eyes. This one's even how to mold and cast your own eyes out of plastic. One of the most simple things to use are little pom-poms like this. You can get them at pretty much any craft store, okay? And you can just glue them on just like this. And they also sell small ones. And if you used a little black one, they would make perfect little pupils for your puppet. So especially if you're doing a more craft version, that would look uh, really funny looking. Another simple thing you can use at craft stores are these uh, stuffed animal eyes. They have these little toggles on the back and these little washers that clasp it in. So what you do is you would poke a little hole you would put this through it and on the inside of the puppet, put this little latch on there. And these can look really cute as well. They also come in multiple sizes. A lot of craft stores also have little pieces of wood that you can use. This is a half sphere, so if you painted this white, that would look really nice. And what's nice about it is it's a solid back, so you can just put the glue right there and stick it on easily. Here's a more flat version, which is also kind of nice. It would look nice on this kind of a puppet. You could cut a ping pong ball in half. These work nice. They're often already white, which is nice. The only thing that's a little bit tough about them is there's not a much surface area to glue. So some people glue some foam in there first and then glue the foam to the head. The one that I'm gonna to use today though is from that video that I showed you a minute ago, casting eyes. These ones I just cast out of plastic and I already primed and painted them and they're ready to go. So I'm gonna be gluing these on just like that. I'm actually gonna be using these animal eyes as well, but I cut the backs off so they have a nice little gluing surface to make the pupils just like that. All right, so I'm gonna try to get these on as evenly as possible, get the placement just right. So I, I like to use pins as well to kind of get the placement right so I can pick it up, put the glue on, and put it back in the exact same spot. I'm actually gonna use hot glue to put these on. Now, as soon as you get that glue on, you wanna put your hand inside and really push down well from the outside so you get a really good connection. And then for the placement of the pupils, you wanna get it just right. So it looks like he's looking right at you. To attach the pupils, I like to use super glue. Now let's talk about a couple options for making teeth. I also made another whole video on how to make different types of teeth for puppets that you can see right here. But for the shark, I like to keep it simple. You could just use simple white craft foam and cut out the shapes that you want. But craft foam can kind of tear easily. Now for a simple puppet like this, something else that I like to use is actually this kind of stiffened felt that you can get. You can get this at pretty much any craft store and I have a link down below as well. All right, I'm just gonna cut out a strip of this just to give you an idea. Now already you can see if we just took this piece of felt and put it in, glued it in just like this, that it would just kind of give it a nice kind of normal looking smile. But this is a shark, so I want to make some sharp teeth on it. So a quick way to do that is to just cut little triangles into it. I like to fold it in half to make sure that it is symmetrical. So I'll just cut like this. Now to attach this type of teeth, I would just put hot glue or Fabri-Tac around the top and put it on the inside of the lip, inside of the mouth of this puppet. 
Another fun little tool and tip is to use pinking shears. Pinking shears cut a zigzag into fabric. So if I take a piece of fabric and cut with the pinking shears, I kind of get a nice zigzag. Just like that. Now that would look really cute inside the shark as well. But since I want to make this one a baby, I think it'll be kind of cute if he has one little tooth on the side. Now there's a ton of ways to do that. One thing that people like to use is like a little makeup sponge. That works well because it's soft. I'm going to use just a little piece of cushion foam. You can get this at pretty much any craft store too. So I'm just going to cut off a little piece like this. And I'm going to just start shaping it into a little tooth. Something kind of like that. All right, there it is. Let me see how that looks on him. That looks super cute. Okay, now I'm just gonna glue it in. The thing that's nice about using a kind of soft foam for this is it's not gonna get in the way of the puppeteering. If this was a more firm foam, uh, the mouth wouldn't be able to shut all the way, it'd be kind of like that, because the tooth would hit. But since it compresses, you have no problem opening and closing the mouth of the puppet. I think he's looking pretty cute, but I think there's one more little detail that'll make him feel more complete. And that's a thin little eyebrow. Eyebrows can make a puppet very expressive. For the eyebrow, I'm just gonna use a little piece of black felt. And all I do is I just cut it into a little sliver of the size that I want it. That looks pretty good. You can already see how expressive they are. If I put them more down like this, it makes them look uh, young. I can put them like this even to make him look angry, like an angry shark. But I think I'm gonna make him look uh, kind of like that. Kind of friendly and surprised. Just give it a touch of glue. There we go, I think he's ready. All right, he's all done. He looks super cute, I love the way his little tail moves, and he's super expressive too. Having that little speed bump in there also gives him a little bit more expression to make some funny faces. <gasps> oh, really happy with how he turned out. I have a ton of other puppet building videos on this channel with a whole bunch of other free patterns as well. Some of them are pretty simple and they would be great projects for kids and other ones are a little bit more complex. But these videos walk you through the whole process. You can download patterns from my website and I also have a tab with a list of all the supplies that I use. I would love to see how your puppets turned out too. The best way to make sure that I see it is to post on Instagram and tag me. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You can also check out our podcast called Puppeteers. On that show we interview a lot of awesome artists with all different backgrounds in puppetry. I can't forget a special thank you to my wife for supplying the vocals. I know this song seems to haunt a lot of people, so you have her to blame. You can check out her channel too.